It was very common in the 70s, 80s and 90s and early 2000s for a family to use blank VHS tapes and record their favourite TV shows. Most of the time, tapes have been recorded over numerous times. And now it's up to me to find the last mystery VHS tape and see what shit we can salvage. This is mystery tape time. What's going on? What's going on everyone? This is the eighth mystery video. This is the eighth mystery video, so welcome back. I'm Robbie Hollywood. You all know who I am, so I don't need to tell you who I am anymore if you've been watching for a while. So as you know, I've got my big box of mystery videos that I brought off a uh, seller on Marketplace. And we've picked out today this one called America's Cup 1987. 1987, and it even says on this side actually, uh, America's Cup 87. Golden Nugget 87, Weird and Wonderful Aussies. This video was alright, uh, it's got some good stuff on it, so it is from 1987 as well because there's no beating around the bush on that. Uh, we are going to have to probably fast forward for a lot of shit and get straight to the commercials, but let's get to my favourite bit where we put on the video and see what's first on the tape. Alright guys, join me. Let's do this. <laughs> Australia's an all board offence of the America's Cup is on. And there we have it. It was America's Cup on here. Uh, I've got a few commercials. We've got a few bits and pieces from this tape. I kept all the good stuff, so let me show you all the good stuff without having to watch the boring shit. The whole three hour tape like I had to. I just wanted to say, this is some uh, footage, and this is like legit, like half an hour's drive from me. This is the Fremantle area. What a beautiful area. Uh, Australia did lose. Australia lost their titles. There's a uh, big Foster's. Foster's on their uh, little sale. You call it a sale, I guess. And it was a huge thing because um, Fremantle is a beautiful place. Like I said, it's only about half an hour away from me where I live and beautiful scenery, beautiful place, beautiful ocean and a lot of fishing and all that. And that's where that took place where Australia lost and def they, def they defended they defended and lost. There's some footage from here because the crowd goes nuts like they're superstars. I can... Australia love it. Australia love it. They're like superstars. Back and there's Kevin Parry. It's almost like a, a royal procession. People crowded to the fence, reaching over, wanting to shake hands with the task force syndicate chairman. They want to shake hands with him. They love him. He lost, but they love him. They want to. They want to greet him. He's a superstar. He's a superstar. Me personally, I couldn't care a shit about any of all this stuff, but uh, these people are frothing. I'm, I'm not trying to be funny for a change. The dog's I'm upstage. Only in Australia can you get upstaged by a dog and have a dog up there getting interviewed with you. No other place would let a dog come in while you're getting interviewed. And is that dog the coolest fucking dog ever? Take a look at that dog. He is the coolest dog and he's so happy to be up there with his owner. I thought I got rid of Liberty. <laughs> Cheeky. Still in the limelight like that. Cheeky. But the coolest fucking dog. Hope you were this GIO. For car insurance cover, you'll rapidly discover. No one beats the SGIO way. It's simple as can be. One quote is all you need. In no time, you'll be on the road again. One quote from the repairer of your choice. At SGIO, it's just part of the service. Always look on the bright side. What a horrible ad these old fucking SGIO ads were. But that guy at the end, his voice, if you're not with SGIO, that voice is killer. He should have been doing crime shows. Have you seen this person on this date and blah, blah, blah. Fucking love that dude's voice. Tell 
telling you now, if I could go back to the 80s, if they said, what year would you want to go and start your life right now from and just, or have this world turn into, I would say 80s, 80, 85, this is 89, I'd say let's go 85, let's start it all over again. Brilliant era, 80s, 90s, best commercials, didn't have all this fucking internet shit, didn't have all these thumbs downs, all these bad comments, thumbs ups, they always help. Okay, so Sunday Times is our Sunday paper here in Western Australia. Always has been since I've been freaking alive and I'm 40 years old. But what gets me is why are they advertising it on the beach with a girl in a bikini and everyone's dropping everything. That's got nothing to do with the Sunday Times. I know sex sells, but that's got nothing to do with it. And why would you be reading the Sunday Times on a kayak? In the water! In the water! One wave comes. Your paper's all wet. Not thinking. Next week in Neighbours, nerves begin to fray as the Robinson wedding draws nigh. If that woman comes to the wedding, I walk out of this house. Daphne is forced to interfere in a family dilemma. Who are you? you can Daphne Lawrence. And you're going to listen to me whether you like it or not. And Danny's bitter jealousy leads to heartbreak for Maria. No, no messages. Looks like you might have cancelled your flight. Neighbours, fine Australian drama, 7 o'clock weeknights on Channel 7. Woo! Daphne? How intense was Neighbours back then compared to today's shit? Intense. And their hairdos. Those fucking big hairdos. The girls were rocking it. It's 24 hours a day. At STIO, it's just part of the service. Always look on the bright. Fuck, it's the SGIO creepy guy voice again. Different ad, creepy voice still. He should have been on Australia's Most Wanted or even gone to America's Most Wanted. He's awesome. Just drifting by, there's a fascinating sparkle in her eyes. As time goes by, you see spirits set free. The Sunnies princess play in the field. The painter from Spain is at it again. And a rock and roll minstrel has fanned an old flame. It's amazing the things that you see when you set your spirits free. Kirk's quality mixes from the people who make cool. I'm not sure if I understood that ad properly or not, but rewind it and watch it again. I think they're talking about a swingers party. I think they're talking about a swingers party. <laughs> you were hungry, Jax. What would you put in a great Aussie burger? Well, you'd start with 100% pure Aussie beef. Flame grilled. And what about an egg? Burgers don't have... Hungry Jack's great Aussie burger would. And... Bacon. No. Two strips of bacon. Now you're cooking. With onion and real cheese. And beetroot. An Aussie burger must have beetroot. Topped off with lettuce, tomato and good old Aussie sauce. You got it. Hungry Jack's new great Aussie burger. Because you've waited long enough, Australia. Now that's a fucking Aussie burger right there. Ma'am? Max Headroom here. Boss around? Okay, let's take a pause. Pause! That was a boring gap! Because who can get excited by an ordinary pause even full of hot drinks? Oh, 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 oh. But a pause filled with bing, a Coke is something else. And for it, it's the pause that refreshes. Try it now. Yes! Coke, Coke, Coke is it. Because it's very possible. Good news, Cocologists. Max Headroom is part of the new Max in the Can contest for Coca-Cola on Channel 7. You could win incredible prizes from National. So check the facts about Max on the cans. And stay tuned to Channel 7. This is where people were really getting excited in 1989. That technology of that ad just then was just showing the future is coming. It is coming. There's going to be some good. There's going to be some good new graphics. Like that fucking head going, dirt, 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 dirt. There's gonna be some good new graphics, what type of shit is gonna come out in the 90s. So what was up next on the tape was uh, the best places in Australia and all the different uh, landmarks. So let me show you. They had this giant crab, giant lobster. Um, that's uh, President doing a Hitler sign. 
There's the big rocking horse there, it's in Adelaide, that's awesome. There's a big cow. These are all landmarks in Australia. Big dinosaur, I guess, big fucking fish. Uh, the big banana. We all know the big banana. That's a, that's a good place in Australia. Uh, the big pineapple, the, big, the giant pineapple. Yes, this is real, people. These are real places to visit in Australia uh, for tourism. Uh, what do we got here? This is the, uh, oh, that's the big pineapple. So then we go to, because uh, they're showing all the landmarks in Australia, this is um, what's written on there, the weird and wonderful Aussies um, part. Um, so then they go to the Northern Territory and show you frog racing. Yes, frog racing. But check out the biggest beer in the world. In Northern Territory, the biggest beer in the world. Well, in 1989 it was anyway. The biggest stubby. The Darwin Stubby is possibly the largest beer bottle in the world. It holds 80 fluid ounces of beer for as long as... Fuck, I love Australia. Sitting there with a ciggy hanging out of his mouth. Fucking, they're just passing this big fuck off beer around the table. Loving it. <sighs> this is the greatest place in the world. Darwin holds the record for the highest per capita consumption of beer in the world. At 230 litres for every man, woman and child each year. The citizens of Darwin even drink the German. They're the boys in the Northern Territory, in Darwin. They drink the Germans under the table. The Germans, for fuck's sake. The record for drinking a Darwin Stubby was set in 1979. 62 seconds. I want to know if that record's ever been beaten. Look it up, someone. Someone look that up. See if the record's been beaten. So then we got this fat cat. Look how big this cat got. I don't know. This They said on this that this is the Guinness Book of Records fattest cat. Another one that's in Darwin. Another Aussie record there. Is this still the fattest cat in the world? Has this record ever been beaten? Look at this cat. It can't climb up and down the stairs by itself. It has to be pulled out by its owner just to go outside and take a shit. Look how big he is. He can't even walk properly. He just lays there on the grass. He'd love to go have a run around, but he is huge. So he's in the Guinness Book of Records. A normal amount of food every day, and that's what he looks for, and that's all he gets. His prawns is the main one. Prawns and crab and fish. There was a cat in Britain that held the record for a while, but at only 37 pounds, he was a lightweight compared to Hemi. Why the Guinness Book of Records. I absolutely love that. Uh, that, poor, that poor fucking thing. That poor bastard. Next up in Darwin, they have this crazy game they like to play. People put money on frog racing. Frog racing! I would put money on this. I would definitely be a part of it and put money on it, but uh, you've got to check this out. Australians can nonetheless find something to bet on. The toad racers. You've, uh, some of you have seen them before. You might say Australians will jump at any chance to indulge in a bit of race gambling. You've come down for that very I don't know if it was legal back then to do these, uh, your own bets on frog racing at your own fucking hotel park or caravan park, wherever it is, but the people that are there are loving it. They're there sitting there with smokes hanging out of their mouths, drinking their beers, absolutely loving it. And I tell you what, I would have joined in and I would have raced my fucking frog as well. We'll run a TAB and you can have a 20 cent unit on whatever toad takes the 20 cent unit on a frog? No, I would be... Chucking a 20 bucks straight on whatever frog I choose, 20 bucks straight on. The idea is to buy yourself a toad, remember the colour, place some money on the outcome, and hope your toad knows what it's all about. So, they paint the back of the toad, the frog, whatever you want to call it, they paint the back of every single one of them a different colour, so that's what you're betting on, whatever colour you want. Is that paint toxic for them? Would that kill them? I, I don't know. It's probably animal, animal cruelty. Animal cruelty, leave it in the comments, but I'd still bet on it. You're having us on. Two dollars, you want to steal it? Two dollars. Two do what about this side? Three. Three dollars. Not a thief. Seven? Nine. Nine dollars, you want it for nine? Well, Lou, you've got it. Give the good lady your name, your phone number and your money, and she'll look after you. First one is Lou. So before you bet on the frogs, you can buy a frog. You can buy a frog and I guess a lot of the uh, winnings comes to you as well. I guess that's how it works, but uh, I'd buy a frog. I'd buy a frog. Now 
in the barrier and they're in the hands of the starter and they're about to race in the plantation derby gives them a pat and here they go and they're racing and look at that an even start and away they go look at them straight it's a good even start there's a couple left at the barrier but they're really moving now as they come round the third set. the tourists are absolutely eating this up imagine all the profit they would have made at that hotel caravan park whatever you want to call it holiday resort anyway the tourists are loving it Unfortunately, I had my money on blue and red one. So next up is in Northern Territory on the tape and um, they're doing a little bit of a uh, beer can, beer can build a boat. So let's chuck it on, chuck it on. So here we got this young lad here. He's got his beer cans. And look at this big raft here that they've made out of beer cans. I would have loved to have done this. Crack a tinny, finish a tinny, and then you make a boat out of it. It's just a brilliant idea. There's a fucking proper speedboat, so I don't know why I left that there, but uh, crack a tinny and you make a fucking tinny boat. So up next in Darwin, I love this, it's got some Darwin stuff on there. We've got the old wet t-shirt competition. Yes, it turns into a wet t-shirt competition, but the girls actually take their tops off. So give me a little bit of a spoiler. I'm probably gonna have to put the censored uh, over the, um, I'm probably gonna have to put censored uh, logos over when they take their tops off, just so we don't get in trouble and so this video can stay up. But um, let's have a look at the old wet t-shirt competition. Star ritual. seems to be that a group of women are competing with each other to see who can bring out the most violent responses from the audience. Maybe it's the heat. Maybe Charles Darwin is turning in his grave. I'm disappointed that I don't get to show you what was under the censored bits, but this is 1989. This is daytime TV. This is weekend TV and they're showing titties on TV. Sorry everyone, don't give a thumbs down. If I was allowed to put the titties on there, I'd put the titties on there for you. But we're not allowed the titties. But the crowd was going nuts. People were taking photos. Imagine this is back in the day when you have to get your photos developed. <laughs> If you really want to make a sale, call now. The lines are open till 9 tonight. Come on, call me now. I'm waiting. I told you. She's waiting for your call now. You know the number. And wow, that's how you used to have to do it before eBay was around, before all the internet was around. You have to call the papers, put an ad in, and that's how you'd sell shit. It would have been fucking hard. Now we end the video, the video finished after that show finished and the tape ran out, but um, the show ends with this guy who nearly got the comb over of the week. And we haven't had a comb over of the week for a while. It's not a comb over of the week because uh, he just didn't respect himself and uh, comb it over. He really should have combed that over, but I have no idea why he's just, uh, he's just letting people kiss him and people wanting to kiss him with his bald head. And he's being a freeze frame, I guess. I don't know while he's standing there with his bald head shining in the sun. Uh, us, uh, we're weird. Us Aussies are weird. Simple as that. So that's the end of the tape, guys. That was a pretty good tape. That was 1989, but... Let's chuck it up on the board. And there's 89 joined with 1990 from uh, last week. And then the six that were before it. So there's eight episodes all together. Eight episodes, we're doing all right. We've got a fair few uh, years in the mix there. But uh, don't forget to subscribe, please. Uh, if you like this content and you like watching it, I have a ball doing it for everyone. So if you can just do us a solid and click the thumbs up and then click the subscribe and the bell icon helps out heaps. 
um, and then more people get to view it and the more people that watch it the more I will do because uh, the less people view it I'll start spreading them out um, longer than having them per week so get it out there and uh, thumbs it up if you really like it other content on my channel don't miss out on that if you like your horror movies if you like your thrifting and if you like your rock and roll band kiss we do kiss reviews on here so check the channel out you never know what you're gonna find on here it might be something for you all right guys thanks for watching it has been good this has been a good, a good tape and there we go they're all the tapes I've gone through so far they're all the tapes I've gone through on mystery tapes and once I get to 50 50 mystery tapes I'm gonna smash them all with a golf club all of these we're going to do a Guinness Book of Records and smash... How many mystery tapes can you smash with a golf club? Thumbs up if you want me to do that. Alright, thanks guys. See you next week. See you.